All right, here we go. Another episode, another fire episode of Bridge Business. My man, Big Horse is with us. Horse, we got a special treat today, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. We got somebody special today. Yeah, up and coming, hard hitting. Man, something special from New York, Brooklyn, New York. Man, something special going on. He's a monster. Oh, man, so much to say about this guy, man. Yeah. Hey, man, we got the, the super middleweight champion of the world. I Stay like there. how that sounds. Oh, yeah. Stay there. <laughs> man, EB, what up, baby? What's good, baby? How's everything, man? Everything is love, man. I, I First and foremost, man, I'm, I love that you're at home. Is that your home right there? Yeah, I'm in my just... mother-in-law's house. <laughs> oh my gosh, can we ask her to come to the camera? I saw she had a bowl or something in her hand. Is that some, <laughs> is that some New Rican food, bro? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the food is in there. What's she make, man? What y'all eating? I don't even know. <laughs> oh, man, man. EB, first of all, man, I want to say I'm really proud of you. Um, 16 and 0, man, you got the world's attention. And I know it wasn't easy. I, I knew it, it took a long time to get to this point. A lot, of, a lot of obedience, a lot of discipline. You know what I mean? A lot of focus. Uh, growing up in Brooklyn, you know, I, I, what we think of Brooklyn from a hip hop perspective, we think of some legends, you know, you think of Jay-Z, you think of Fabulous, you think of Uncle Murder, you think of all these different people, man. What yeah. was it like for you growing up in Brooklyn? I mean, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, as always, man, it was rough, you know, I'm from Bushwick. So, you know, it wasn't easy. Um, you know, I had to, I had to, uh, I had to remain focused, man, you know, because out here in Brooklyn, you know, that it's easy to get caught up in the streets, you know, you got the young kids, you know, they selling drugs, making money, you know, and I wasn't making no money, you know, back then I was young, you know, but yeah. I had these young kids, man, they was hustling and they was doing their thing, they was making money, you know, so that right there is like, you know, I overcame that, man, just by just staying focused and mentally strong, you know, knowing that I'm gonna get there, but I just gotta work hard. I gotta work a little bit harder. You know, these guys in the street, they doing their thing, but. I'm gonna stay in the gym and I'm gonna stay focused and I'm gonna keep winning, you know, and, and going to those national tournaments and winning everything, keep getting noticed until I turn pro. Mm -hmm. So as a no, being, being from Brooklyn and stuff like that, being from Brooklyn, I know you fought in Gleason's gym and all of that. What made you pick up boxing? What made you love boxing? What made you get into um, Man, since I was two years old, you know, I was watching boxing already. You know, my, my uncles and my, my grandmother, and her friends, they watch. I don't know if you know Tito Trinidad. I know y'all. I know you know him. Yeah. You know, so oh, man. you know they, that's the goat right there, man. And uh, I used to watch him growing up when I was a kid. And you know, he was one of the reasons why I started boxing. You know, um, he really motivated me to to get in the gym and 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 be in the gym. You know, but um, my dad put me in the gym. You know, I was you know I was I started off playing baseball first. But, you know, it came winter time and, you know, obviously I was all over the place. I was, you know, in school behaving bad and shit. And um, my dad found a little gym in Brooklyn out here. His boy was training a couple kids, you know, and his boy was like, yo, listen, like, you know, you can bring your son, I train him. My father was like, all right, cool. My father brought me to the gym. I fell in love with it. You know what I'm saying? And they put me in the ring and it was just, everything was just so second nature to me, man. And three months later, I was already fighting in a tournament. Mm. The Junior Olympics at seven years old. You know, yeah. so that's how just everything started. Wow, that fast, man. So that, that must mean you a natural. Do you, do you believe in that, that natural talent can get you a championship or it takes a lot of hard work with that talent? Yeah, you know, you got to you gotta have the talent, but, you know, that, that, that don't mean nothing if you don't have no hard work, you know. I mm -hmm. know a lot of guys that had a lot of talent from Brooklyn and just never, Never, you know, never amounted to none because they depended on their talent. They didn't know they didn't know what was hard work, you know. And that's something that you know, if you want something, you gotta work hard for it. Yeah. You know, it, it's not gonna come on. It's not gonna come on your plate. You're not gonna grab it just that easy. You know what I'm saying? You gotta work and work and work and work and work and work. You know. So, you know. So for me, it's like I got a lot of talent. So if it's like you got talent and you got hard work, you put that together, man. I feel like you be a, you become a superstar. Mm. You like that horse? Yeah, man. I like. So uh, right now, what's your uh, what's the weight that you fight comfortably at right now? Is it one sixty or one sixty eight that you feel like that's your actual comfortable weight that you fight? Yeah. At? Um. You know, right now, um, I moved. I just recently moved up in July. You know, my July twenty first fight, my first fight at the bubble. Mm -hmm. You know, um, with top. You know, at uh, MGM Grand. Um, I moved up to one sixty eight. You know, the pandemic hit and stuff. I blew up, but I feel like not 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 also that, but. 
I feel like I really got a good rest. So I feel like my body grew, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, during them, them that, that, that whole, you know, the quarantine pandemic stuff that we were stuck home. You know, I was just home all day, just resting, man, just resting on my body. So I felt like I grew, I grew bigger. My legs got bigger, my arms, everything. I started, I felt like I hit, I hit, I was hitting more harder. Mm-hmm. And I, I just felt comfortable, you know, I'm 23 years old. So it's not good to be in, at 160, I was killing myself. Like bad, bad, I was killing myself, you know, and that's not healthy for you. Cause at the end of the day, if I go into a fight, I'm not hydrated well, I get hit with a shot, it's over. Mm-hmm. Come on, man, we got EB right here, the super middleweight champion of the world. Now, the reason why I'm saying this, because when you manifest it, you can say that Sway and Big Horse from Bridge Business was the first to say that, all right? Yeah. Um, hey, yo, I used to always watch you, man. I used to be like, yo, I'm gonna get on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see Sway soon. Uh, Everybody that's out there that was big, I always said, I'm gonna see all these guys soon, man, and look. Yo, it, it looked like happened. You know, and that's a part of that manifestation. Um, that that you was that we talking about. I heard you once say that you manifested everything that's happening. But the crazy part, EB, and I want you to talk to your critics, man. They not giving these knockouts the, the credit that the, that they deserve. You know, uh, I don't think who it is. They not giving you the credit that you deserve. They say you ain't coming out that first round. They don't. I guess they not considering your amateur career, your growth, your transition from just from being a boxer to a boxer puncher. Man, talk to your critics, man. They don't believe. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's already getting sickening, you know. But at the end of the day, I know I'm gonna prove them wrong, you know. And at, at the end of the day, like what Fat Joe told me, you know, mm-hmm. you know, I could curse, right? A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. You know, Fat Joe told me that they have right, 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 literally right after my fight, I Facetime him. He said, "Yo, fuck the critics." He said, "Nobody could do what you do, man." He said, "Cause everybody, if everybody could do what you do, if, if it was that easy, everybody would be doing it." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Shakur Stevenson, my brother that was main event, we was in a room after the fight, and he was like, yo, E, I ain't going front. I fought 12 rounds, nigga, but I wish I had your power. I wish. <laughs> he told me straight up. He said, yo, I, he said, my body's sore, nigga. I said, damn. He said, yo, I wish I had your power. If I had your power, oh, my God. You know, so right there goes to show you that a lot of people who, who don't want to – who don't want them to get a first round knockout or third or third round knockout and go home early? You don't get paid overtime. And it's not my fault. Listen, Sway, they go and they give me a step up, or they 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 put somebody in there, or they or they or they um they put somebody in there that's durable, you know, that yeah. can take me rounds. This last dude was in camp with Andre Ward, Canelo Alvarez, the Charlo brothers, Sergey Kovalov. He was just in camp for my fight. He was he was just he was just he was just in camp he was just in camp for my fight with uh with Hami Mugia. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So right there is like it's it's like a full for thought, like all right, he got experience. That's what I thought. I said he got experience. Probably he could know how to move maneuver his way out to the first round, you know. Cause if I'm shit, if I'm sparring with all these guys, Andre Ward, Canelo Alvarez, all these top guys, my mindset is gonna go on a different level. It'll be you know, and it happened to me. Yeah, yeah. Man, that, that's uh man, that's crazy. Me and Horse was talking about that too, right? Horse? Yeah, so since you like 16 and 0, right? I'll be looking at it saying, hey, won't you start fighting some of these rank fighters? Like, you know, the the the, the, the sixth rank fighter, the, the, the fifth rank fighter. So, you know, tell your camp to reach out to them, you know, because you know these big dogs, they're gonna be scared to fight you. A dude yeah. like, a dude right now that got the belt right now, you think he wanna fight a dude that's walking in there knocking somebody out in the first round? That's a lot of work, man. That's 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 mm-hmm. too much work. I'd rather go dance with somebody for 12 rounds, maybe knock them out. You're you're a monster. You running in there saying you're a monster. You understand coming from that's the yeah. attitude that you got. So I, you know, I, I look at it and say, won't you go for different belts like in that class? Like go for the, you know, everybody want, you know, Canelo and everybody want this, that, and third, but you could rack a ball them belt so you could be the go the C guy, you know, because people want to be undisputed. So they gotta see you. So you might as well just take all the little crumbs on the belt so they can come see you no matter what. <laughs> yeah, you know, like if you look at my first 16 fights, right? Mm-hmm. And you look at Canelo Alvarez's first 16 fights, or you look at Mike Tyson's first 16 fights, the rec- the, the the opponents that I got is a lot better than what these guys was facing in their first 16 fights. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know what it is, Sway? I'm knocking them out in the first round. So I'm making it, I'm making the shit look so easy. You know what I'm saying? I'm making it look so easy. And it's not easy. It's hard work, Sway. 
You know what but, I'm saying? But, hey, hey, you get rid of them too quick though, EB. It looks easy, <laughs> man. I know. It, <laughs> it, 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 is that the is that the goal? Go in there, no overtime, knock this shit out. Let's get the money. Let's get out of here real fast. Is yeah, you know, goal? like I just pack them up, but at the end of the day, I do it with I do it with skill. You know, I use my jack, but it's like, yo, I got heavy hands. If I land, listen, yo. <laughs> Tell me if you in the ring with somebody and you hit somebody, boom, and they or their eyes change and their eyes go crisscross. What are you doing? Oh, are you gonna play with the nigga? Or you gonna are you gonna take them out? Don't take them out. You gonna take them out? It's hey. not my fault that the last dude for all these guys, he was been in the ring with all these with all these champions, and I just hit harder than all of these guys. You know what I'm saying? It's not my fault. You know, I just talk to God. Ask him why he blessed me with that power. Hey, hey, any of the fights that you had, did anybody ever catch you with something like, oh, okay, okay? Did anybody ever get you with like, you ain't got to name no names? Did anybody yeah, I think like in my fourth fight, yeah. Like I got caught, but when I got hit, I responded so quick. Like I got hit and I responded like five seconds later, I already had him on the floor, literally. Yeah. Like it woke me up. Yeah, yeah. You, know what, you know what my thing is? My thing is this, it seemed like the pressure of keeping these first round knockouts you know, keep it going, you know, keep it consistent. Like if I was your next contender, right? I'd be like, you know what? I'm gonna hold this dude. I'm gonna tangle him up for the first round. I'm gonna frustrate him. I'm gonna see what he could do for the second round. Because maybe if you lose that streak, maybe it might throw you off your game plan. You know, maybe, yeah. you, might want it, maybe you might want it even, you know, you more, you more hungry to knock him out the second round. Do you ever think like, yo, you know what? I'll go to the gym. Let me work on a little couple of things. Cause I know there gotta be a couple of opponents that you fight that you'd be like, oh, I know I can knock him out real quick. But I need some work. You know what I mean? Let me let me. Yeah. Know. You ever feel like that in your mind? Like, let me get a little work in. Yeah. Um. You know, for this last fight that I fought, I was gonna, I was, I really was gonna let, I was gonna let it go to the second round. But the motherfucker was talking so much shit, man, that I was like, <laughs> Nah, I can't let this dude. He was talking too much. I'm gonna get him out of here. Uh -huh. You know. So now I'm not even worrying about the rounds because I go, I go rounds in the gym. You know, like. My main thing is like, I'm gonna keep doing this shit until it's time for me to go to those rounds. And then when they see that, yo, Agaka Box, wow, he got a crazy IQ. He got crazy head movement. He got a beautiful jab. He got good foot movement. He, he can motherfucker can move like Pennell Whitaker in there. Mm -hmm. They don't see that. You know what I'm saying? They don't see, they haven't seen yet the, you know, the shoulder roll. When I, when I walk up to a nigga and I, and I catch the shoulder roll and I shoot the uppercut, or I catch the shoulder and I shoot the right hand hook. They never see none of that sway, you know. In the gym, people see it, and that's when the people behind the scenes like, Yo, "This dude's a bad boy." They yeah. just think it's all power with him. It's not. You ain't bringing no shoulder to the fight when you walk in the ring. I ain't never seen no shoulder to see. Yeah, but, but I ain't when seen I, no I, shoulder, bro. That comes with comfortability. Like when, when, you know, when I get into the fourth round, the fifth round, I'm comfortable already. You know, I start throwing the shoulder. I start catching shots with the shoulder. You know, like boom, catching, shooting off shots, boom, boom, boom. Like I'm, I'm a natural. You know, I had this. My whole life, I was I was a natural. I boxed my whole life. It just so happened that I got older, and my power just went on a, on another level, you know. Uh -huh. But I, my, my my special ability is boxing. I could box. Yo, what, like, I, I could, if I got your swing, if a uh, 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 big horse. Hey, look, if I don't if I don't want to get hit, trust me, I'm not getting hit. I promise you. Yo, okay. in the gym, I'm in the gym. I put guys in the gym to swing at me and I won't throw not one punch for five, six rounds. Just them throwing at me and I'm just slipping, slipping, pull, pushing them off, using my angles, you know what I'm saying? Using different tricks to add to my arsenal. Yo, I love it, man. EB here, he, that's champ talk, horse. We have a champ talk. Hey, let me ask you this, Teofimo, um, I can't think a second to the last fight he had, I went to see him fight. Call, call um, me. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Richard Comey. Yeah, when he fought Comey. Okay, yes. And then um, we were having a conversation. That was the first time I met him. And he was asking me before the fight, hey, Sway, what do you think I should do after the fight? Should I do a flip? Should I do this dance step? Should I, you know, I was like, man, why are you even focused on that? You ain't even had to fight, <laughs> right? And he said, nah, man, I'm confident I'm going to win. But when I win, I got to do this. I said, why? He said, because it could go viral. And that's the name of the game right now. You got to bring attention to your name. So when you look at Ryan Garcia and how many followers he has, Teofimo, who's actually playing to that, playing to social media, I like what you do too. I see you go on your live a lot. I see you talking to people. I love that you share your experiences. 
you're hanging out with Snoop Dogg, Tracy Morgan. You know, you, Lil Wayne is hitting you up on your, uh, yeah. on, your fight, on your FaceTime, man. I know it's a surreal experience. What do you find that all of those people, all of those successful people have in common? And do you have anything in common with them? That's a good question. You know, um, that's a real good question, man. You know, just for the simple fact that it's different industries, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I feel like one thing that we have, we can have in common and that we do have in common is, 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 is the focus and, and, and not get distracted, mm. you know, because remember you got Snoop Dogg that he's a rapper. So it's a different industry. You know, you got Tracy Morgan, he's a comedian, you know, but I felt like a lot of things that, that, that we are, um, that we're like, um, the same at is, uh, the focus mm. on, on, on one thing that you want and you're going to have to go and get that, you know, and I feel like Fat Joe did it. That's how he did it. That's how Tracy did it. That's how Snoop did it. That's how all these guys did it was the amount of focus that they had to get to where they want to get to, you know, and the discipline that they needed to get to where they wanted to, you know, and the hard work. As in the day, they all worked hard. Tracy had a, I heard Tracy's story, you know, how he came up and he went into Def Jam and four months into being on Def Jam, whatever he became, that's how he became famous, you know, but he worked hard, you know, yeah. he had to put himself in that position. Fat Joe had to work hard and put himself in that position. So I just feel like, you know, it's like the focus, the discipline and hard work. That's what it is, man. I like that. And, and, then, and then let's talk about the money aspect real quick because I know you got a plan. I know you about this money game. I see you in your car. I see you pulling yeah. up on the streets. I see yeah. your realms. Come on, EB. I see your realms, okay? Uh, but money, you know, money is an interesting thing. You know, people worship money sometimes and it, and it take them down a lonely road. You know, you see people crash and burn over money. You see a lot of boxers, a lot of athletes make a lot of money. And at the end of the career, they don't have they go it. Broke. They go they broke. broke. And I but know. I, so now I like this question right here. So you know where I'm going it. with it. Come on. Yeah. I know you. I know you gave. I know you gave the mandate to top rank that man. We gonna break the bank. Mm -hmm. We gonna break the bank. Yeah. So my question is, Eb, once you break the bank and you get the money, what are your plans to do with it? So now I love this question. I love when people ask me this question because, you know, I'm 23 years old, but my mind is on another level. I have people around me that's very wealthy, not rich, but wealthy people that has big, big investments, you know, um, investments, you know, like don't let the money control you. You got to control the money. Mm. You got to use the money as a tool to make more money. You know, at the end of the day, I want to, this is for my family. So I want to help my family. You know, I got a baby on the way now, you know, my girl's pregnant, so it's a lot of things that my mind is changing now. Everything is working towards my future and my family and making sure I'm set, making sure she's set, and then obviously eventually making sure my kid is set. You know, I want my kid to have millions of dollars by the time he is 18 or she is 18. Mm -hmm. That when she is 18, she has money in the bank already saved. You know, I put myself in position and, and people around me put me in positions where that I'm with with one of the top dogs in real estate, flipping NJ. I don't know if you know, he, he messes with DJ Envy. Yeah, no. Know, he's doing, so so that's one of the guys that's like my right hand now, you know, and I got him next to me that he's just waiting for when we get those big bucks, we can start doing big, big projects. You know, and he this dude does business with Nicky Jam, with Snoop Dogg, with French Montana. He's about to do something with Cardi B. You know, he's, this guy's taking these rappers and these people to another level. So for me, I got this dude I'm out, I'm out to have dinner with him at seven o'clock today. You oh, know, wow. so, so, so this dude is like right in my right hand. You know, he's right next, he's right here with me. I, I call him, he picks up my phone call. So, you know, that's one thing that I'm, I'm looking forward to is investing my money into real estate. You know, cause at the end of the day, Sway and Big Horse, boxing is not forever. When I, I want to retire by, by the time I'm 30 and I want to have millions in the bank and I want to be on an island with my family, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? Sipping yeah. on a, a fucking colada and, and, and knowing that every first of the month I'm getting a check. You know, there you go. Come on, man. Talk hey, to him, EB. Hey, man, you gotta you love saying. Hey, hey, EB, did you ever meet Felix Trinidad? Before? Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I was actually a month ago at, uh, or like six weeks ago, I was in Puerto Rico with him. He, he gave you any advice? He gave you any like advice, like? 
he all I'm gonna say is he passed the torch, big horse. Ooh. He passed the torch. And not only that, he was with me for three hours and I was in his town in his backyard. You know, and I know he don't do that with any fighter. You know, um, he got very emotional when I was talking to him, you know, because he said I remind him, I remind him of himself when he was my age. Wow. You know, I had my dad there, I had my coach there, I had my family there. And uh, you know, he, he started crying, he got emotional talking about his life and his career coming up. You know, and he told me, yo, when you first came in and I seen you, I already knew you was humble and you had a good head on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. He told me to stay focused, keep working hard, keep working hard and just make sure you could go 12 rounds strong like I did. And he said, you're gonna go far. He told me like that, you're gonna go far. Mm -hmm. I, yo, yo, hey, I, told, I said, yo, listen, now being with you face to face from the stories that I heard of this man and how, how um, iconic he is of, of, of a person and his charisma, I said, I will never surpass you. I told him. Yeah. yeah. I will never, I look up to this man too much. I said, maybe I could probably be next to him, stand next to him, but I will never surpass that. That dude did something that no Puerto Rican fighter has ever done. Yeah. He stops yeah. the island. Yes. <laughs> he rapped, hey man, he, he, he rapped PR so cold, man. I, I used to love it. I love, my favorite fight was the De La Hoya fight. Yes, <laughs> and, 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 and when he won, man, it, it felt like, and nothing against De La Hoya, I just, you know, man, Trinidad was just so humble in his presence. I'm a big Miguel yeah. Cotto fan. We cannot forget Miguel Cotto, man. That dude is amazing. Oh, yeah, he's another one. Yeah. When, when, when Trinidad retired, I started watching Cotto. You know, I grew up watching Cotto all his fights. You know, I went to the Cotto and Zab Judah fight mm -hmm. in the garden. You know, that was that was crazy for me, man. That was legendary, you know, the, the like fans. And I caught chills at 10 years old watching. I had my little bandana on. Yeah. And people out and you know, the fans was like, yo, he's going to be champ. That little one right there, he got it. Look at his face. He got it. He got the charisma. He got the face. He got the attitude. He's going to be champ. You know, and I always knew, man. I told my father, I said, yo, we're going to be here. And we're going to sell out the garden. We're going to sell out the garden. Puerto Rican Day Parade weekend, right? Puerto Rican Day Parade, yeah. <laughs> and look, you know, June, they, they we, we, we had a lot of... You know, God willing, you know, the MSG opens up, man. You know, we, we def they definitely already have that in the works for me for Puerto Rico oh. Day weekend. Hey, so man, that's what they used to do. Like, remember Horace Puerto Day uh, a Parade weekend? You have Miguel Cotto would come off a fight and he'd be on that, on that, Ooh, right? On that man, it used to be lit, man. Jimmy's Cafe, all that after that. Ooh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Jimmy's my man. Yeah, um, yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah. AB, I love that. that. He's legendary, man. I love you so. You're 23, man, but you're so knowledgeable. You know what I mean? You know the history. You connected to the culture. We throwing yeah. names at you. You know, you like Jimmy's my man. You know, yeah. Like, Jimmy what? Jimmy Cafe. That dude's legendary. He he the one that brought up. He brought up Fidel Castro when Fidel yeah. Castro I heard came out here. He brought him to the restaurant. You know yeah. so. Yeah, that's beautiful. Hey, man, so we named Snoop Dogg, we named Lil Wayne, we named Fat Joe. Man, if you had to pick one for your ring walk on your first championship fight, who you picking? You know I'm up to go with? Because at the end of the day, I look, it, my first championship <laughs> fight, you know I always got Fat Joe with me, no matter what, you know what I'm saying? He was, he's going me, and he's going to stay with me, you know, so... Fat, Fat Joe don't even count because he's there already, you know. But okay, um, so Joe don't count. I think, yeah, you know, I think for me, I probably have well, everybody. I probably have Fat Joe, Snoop Dogg, Little Wayne, Daddy Yankee. I probably all of them walking out with me just to make a statement, like, yeah, yeah, we here, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it's just a blessing, man. You know, I was on the phone with with, with Little Wayne, and he was like, "Yo, man, you see your champ when this shit open up. Trust and believe, I'm there front row." Mm. Hey, Snoop man. Dogg said, champ, when this shit open up, I'm there front row. You know, so right. it's crazy. I'm 16 and 0, man. But yo, listen, man, you know, my last fight, I had 2.2 million viewers, you know, uh -huh. more than the main event. So we obviously making a statement. Yeah, nah, man. It's your energy, it's your charisma. And I like your faith. Your, you know what I mean? Your devotion and loyalty to family. You know, man, stay that path, EB. We got, yeah. You got a lot of people in your corner, bro. Your story yeah. represents a lot of our story. That's why, yeah. we, you know, that's why we gravitate towards you, bro. You, yeah, man. 
you know, Horace been wanting to talk to you for a long time, too. Man, you see okay. his hat, he, yo, he's a blessed young man. He wear, they got the hat that says blessed, he's a blessed young man. Yes. Yo, so who's, who's your next fight? Um, I'm gonna be fighting March 20th. Um, but um, we looking, you know, we looking for, uh, I don't know, probably March. We'll probably do like a co-mean event. Um, I don't know who yet, you know, I, I mentioned, uh, but I, he want, he's fighting Caleb Plant now. Look, I, I screenshot his, his box rec, uh, Caleb T uh, Turax, but he's fighting Caleb Plant now, January 30th. Okay. I was looking at guys like that, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? For, for I'm going from here to here. Yeah. You know, so I'm looking at guys like that. Look, Kato Plant is fighting him, and I didn't even know. I just screenshot this. I said, this dude look like he, he look like he'll be durable for me. Uh -huh. You know, he was he's ranked like I think 10 or gotcha. 9 for the, yeah. the IBF. Mm -hmm. And um, I mentioned him, you know, Steven Nelson, who's I think 18 and 0, 17 and 0. Um, you know, you got Gabriel Rosado, mm -hmm. you know, but uh we look we really looking forward to fighting um hopefully God willing uh Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Wow. for the Puerto Rican Day weekend. Mm -hmm. Wow, you know how huge that is, man. <laughs> so I'm that people want to talk. I'm letting them talk because when we jump, we're not jumping from here to here. No, we're gonna jump from here to here. There and you go. Like, oh shit, this e, e, e B's a monster for real. Yeah. Talk that shit, E B. Come on, man. You said you, know you manifested this whole year. That's what we like, man. You want to bust, man? Of course, you want yeah. something else to him before hey, we you. walk the champ out the ring. Hey, yeah, man. most definitely. Hey man, much success to you, man. Keep going. I'm glad that you got your head on right, man. You focused, man. Um, I want to congratulate you early, champ. You know, because I know that's gonna happen. So I want to give you your flowers now. Congratulations, champ. And you know, just keep going, keep doing it for Brooklyn, keep doing it for Puerto Rico. I know you got a big family. I heard you got mad uncles and cousins, <laughs> all that man. I heard y'all deep out there, so. Yo, keep doing it, man. You no, know, I got 50 uncles, man. In fact, Joe, like, yo, you got a hundred, hundred thousand uncles out there in the MSG. I'm walking around like, yo, I'm his uncle, I'm his uncle. Like, damn, you got a big family, man. But so you make a lot of people proud, man. So keep doing your thing, man. And congratulations on the birth of your child. So keep going, man. Thank you, horse. I appreciate it, man. Listen, you know, I got something special. You know, it's something special for me in, 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 in the near future. You know, I just know that it was going to come. I didn't know when. But I knew this shit was gonna come for me. You know, I knew God was gonna bless me. Um, you know, I worked very hard. You know, me, my father been through a lot. You know, my mother been through a lot. You know, we obviously were from Brooklyn, from the projects, from the hood, you know, from the dirt. And, um, you know, I think that I deserve everything that's coming my way. You know, I feel like I've, I got a good heart. I'm humble. I'm the people's champ. You know, yes. the people out there that, that wanna take pictures with me, or sign yeah. autographs, I'm taking pictures with them. You know, I never dub nobody from taking pictures, from signing autographs, you know, because at the end of the day, I know me doing that, I'm chasing somebody else's life. There you go. And for exactly. me, it's just for the kids, man. You know, all the kids is everything for me, you know? Like, if I can motivate 100 million kids out there, that's what I'm gonna do. Man, you motivating kids and adults. You got us excited too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right. Hey, hey, B, hey, man, EB, we love you, brother. Uh, I love you too, Sway. Thank you, my brother. Absolutely, man, I can't wait to see you in person and, and check it, man. Me and Horse is gonna be front row too. Oh, yes, sir. Hey, yo, yo, Horse, <laughs> make sure Sway when yo. this open up. I need to be in that studio. You know, what absolutely, I'm definitely, definitely. Okay. Yeah, you gotta come to the studio when we get to Sway in the Morning 2021 going, okay? I saw yeah, you most definitely. I saw you had bars with Snoop. Yeah, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see if I write, I'm gonna have, you know, Lil Wayne or Snoop write me some shit, you yeah. know, so I'm gonna spit real quick. Okay. <laughs> come with it, man. Give it up for the champ, man. Edgar, uh, baby. man, EB, come Let's on. Salute, champ. The middleweight champion of the world. <laughs> Here you go, boy.